All month, we are counting down to Broadway's biggest night. It's the 76th Annual Tony Awards. It airs on June 11th right here, by the way, on good old CBS. Ben Platt made Broadway history when he won the Tony. I remember this for Best Actor in the Musical, Dear Evan Hansen. He was only 23 at the time, the youngest person ever to win that award solo. You go, Ben Platt. Now he's back on Broadway in the musical revival of Parade, and he's nominated for, guess what, another Tony in the Best Actor category. Parade tells a true life story of Leo Frank, a Jewish factory worker in Atlanta, who was accused of the murder of a 13-year-old girl in 1913. Rampant anti-Semitism leads to his conviction and imprisonment. In this promotional video, Ben's character, Leo, sings, "It's not. this is not over yet, after the governor agrees to reopen the case. It means no, this isn't over. Hell, it's just begun. Hail the resurrection of the South's least favorite son. It means I made a vow. The journey ahead might get shorter. I might reach the end of my rope, but suddenly, loud as a mortar, there is hope. Finally, yes, Leo, there is hope. Oh my gosh, Ben Platt, we welcome you. We're so glad you're here. We've all seen the play, and thank you all for coming. Really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no, so I was there. Really in Amazing. Row yeah. eight, seat one hundred one. Did you see me? <laughs> But anyway, I didn't ben, I, I briefly peeped. <laughs> but Ben, this is the thing. I'm embarrassed to say I knew nothing about this play. I know it's a revival. It's a great way it's, to come in. Well, it's called Parade, and, and so it's a musical. So I'm I'm prepared for some Yankee Doodle dandy, some very <laughs> patriotic things. And all of a sudden, the play is what it is, and I couldn't believe what I was watching. I can't imagine what it's like for you to have to bring up the emotion that you have to bring up night after night to tell this story. Yet you wanted to play this character. You knew this play very well. I did. Well, you know, it's sort of twofold. Uh, I'm a musical theater lover, nerd, whatever you want to call it, since I was very, 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 very little. And so this is a show that's been beloved by the community for a long time. It was in, originally on Broadway in 98. and. Um, you know, had a, a lot of critical acclaim and, and won some Tonys, but didn't quite hit the way that I think the theater community wanted it to. And so the, the music, especially in the score and the story, have been beloved for a long time. So yeah. it's, a, it's a show I've always loved. And then on top of that, you know, as a Jewish person, it's a story that's very important and, yes. and difficult. And so I think I always knew that those two things would be a great kind of combination in making me an authentic storyteller for this particular role. Mm -hmm. So it's always been on my list of things I'd love to do. Uh, and so when Michael Arden, our director, reached out to me and told me his concept for it, it was like yeah. a real no-brainer. Yeah, I get it. You I know, get it. You assume anti-Semitism uh, would be on the decline all these years later, 100 years nearly or more after uh, Leo Frank's death, and yet it's not. And to my amazement, in a preview of the show, there are actually neo-Nazi sympathizers protesting, protesting outside. It sounds made up to even say that. I know, it's, yeah. it's really insane. Yeah. It's not something we expected. It was our first performance, and we were all doing a circle on stage, it's sort of like a bonding circle before we went on, and our stage manager very calmly was like, just so you all know, there are protesters outside, kind of you know, accosting some of the people who are trying to get into the theater, but people are undeterred, and they're heading inside, and they're excited to see it, and I think it was obviously disappointing and scary, but also really galvanizing and reminded us all how urgent this particular story is. And there's been lots of little things along the way that have been sort of the universe letting us all know that this is really the story to be telling at this current moment. Uh, and I but think so that, that was... was painful to me to say, one, certainly once I saw the play and then to hear the backstory. Wasn't that painful for you? To, of course. I yes. mean, it's, it, it makes it, in, you can't, particularly when you're doing a, a period piece or a revival, you think, okay, I'm gonna be able to really remove myself from this and I'll be, I'll assume this character and live in this world and then go home and the, none of it will come with me. Yeah. Which, you know, maybe naively I thought, especially after Evan Hansen, which was such a bleed of, of contemporary life and, you know, hard to leave yeah. behind. But this has been the same in the sense that it's, you know, it feels very frighteningly contemporary. The mm -hmm. subject matter, the storytelling, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's, it's tough to think that it, we haven't come very far in those yeah. hundred years. Even more important and more reason that, that it matters in, exactly. in this moment. The mo I would say intermission, normally people walk away, they're not thinking anything. You are there on stage in intermission. What is that moment like for you? I sat there just watching you the whole time. 
What is that moment? You know, it's again, Michael Arden, our director, is really brilliant. And when he first pitched me the show, that was among his initial concepts was this idea that Leo would stay on stage. You know, he's imprisoned. This this man, Leo Frank, was in prison for the last two years of his life, and the show is very propulsive and has to cover a lot of ground and big ideas. And uh, Leo and Lucille act as sort of symbols for a lot of things. And I think. For me, it's it's brilliant on Michael's behalf because it's a moment to really pay homage to just this human being and this man who was was in isolation for the end of his life and really have a moment every night where that's the only focus. And I think for the audience, it really challenges them in terms of yeah. are, am I willing to entirely disengage or yeah. uh, do I sort of partially disengage? And you know, I appreciate people that you know. I, I think there's all valid responses, but I certainly appreciate when people just decide that really they want to just take stand. When's your intermission? Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. There's an amazing number called Rumbling and Rolling that opens yeah. the second. Oh, that's right. Um, right. And I am not in that, so I get to take So, it. Ben, let me ask you. The, um, the moment that for me, I think, and for the audience was incredibly moving is right before you're about to be lynched. Um, you recite a, a prayer, the Shema, which uh, is everybody just starts to break down. And as you do that, you say that this role has brought you closer to your Jewish identity. Were you, were you apart from it before? You know, I wouldn't say apart from it, I think, you know, as a Jew, there's like all this rhetoric about what makes a good Jew, what makes a bad Jew, and you know, are you, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you go to temple, and High holidays, eat kosher, sorry, yeah. exactly, and as I've grown older, there's like certain observances and theologies that just don't resonate with me the same way, and I think, you know, sometimes you think, does that make me less connected to my Judaism, but I think in doing this show, you know, Lucille, for example, the, 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 the woman who is married to, to Leo, has really assimilated into the culture of the South, and yet this whole trial makes her have to really undeniably accept her own Judaism, even though she's not nearly as observant as her husband. And I think there's something so undeniable about doing like a 23 in me and seeing that your ethnic makeup is Ashkenazi Jew. And it's like, regardless of whether I go to temple or not, I'm, you know, I'm a Jew. So yeah, yeah. I think it has allowed me to just accept that and really embrace whatever my cultural and you know, emotional version of Judaism might be, and certainly that moment of saying the Shema. You know, it, I, it's hard to imagine as an actor what that moment might be like when you're about your life is about to end and yes. you can see it in front of you. And I can only imagine that you might go to the kind of the recesses of your mind into the most instinctual place and like the thing that you can kind of fall back on when all else fails. Yeah. And certainly as a Jew, I can relate to that being the Shema because it's a prayer I said before bed, and you know, we said it in day school and camp. And My kids say it now before bed. Yes, Ben, congratulations. Congratulations. So good. so good. Go see so this good. play. Yeah. Yes. Rival of Parade, currently at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater on Broadway.